Hey everyone, and welcome to another weekly art video. I hope you're having an amazing day, and thanks so much for joining me on this one. If you enjoy working with watercolor pencils or are looking to learn new techniques, or maybe you're wondering what the best way is for painting backgrounds or large areas with smoother washes or softer or more painterly effects, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to be sharing my favorite way for combining watercolor pencils and traditional watercolor paint in one same artwork, and how I use the strengths of both mediums to create interesting and well-balanced pieces, while simultaneously making the process of painting large areas and creating the effects that I want way easier for myself. As I share this information with you, you're going to see me work on this Blue Jay piece. So first and foremost, I do want to mention that it's taken me somewhere around three years or so of relatively consistently working with this very versatile medium, which is really a drawing and painting medium all wrapped up into one that can be used in so many different ways. And I say relatively consistently because as you probably already know, if you've been following me online for any amount of time, I'm really interested in developing my skills with a variety of different mediums and with a variety of different subjects. So I'm working on improving my skills with many different drawing and painting mediums simultaneously. But what I am getting at is that it has taken me a while to finally arrive at a point at which I have solidified my process and have come to a conclusion as to what specific techniques help me arrive at the results that I love. And I want to share what I discover and learn about this medium in hopes that this will help you speed up your learning process and also discover your own way of working. If you're just getting started with watercolor pencils, I have a very thorough watercolor pencil 101 guide for beginners, as well as step-by-step -step tutorials on how to paint birds with watercolor pencils, how to paint landscapes, flowers, and objects, which I'll make sure to link to down below as well in case you'd like to check those out. So throughout this time, I have created lots of duds when it comes to working with watercolor pencils. And there have been a few times that I have been doing a relatively good job rendering the subject the way that I wanted to, but then I try to color in or paint in larger areas or say the background and I completely ruin the piece because I end up with a background area that is way too textured, which it's important to know that higher amounts of texture equals more visual weight, which means that if I create too much texture in my background, I can run the risk of it competing visually way too much with my subject or my focal point, and I definitely don't want that. If there's too much texture everywhere throughout the piece, it just might end up being way too much. It's always important to think of this kind of thing when we are designing and creating a visual composition. Aside from this, if you've ever tried to fill in a large area with any type of pencil, you know how time consuming that is. And while watercolor pencils do allow for a certain level of painterly effects, there is always going to be a certain limit to what you can do. For example, if you want to create something like blooms, splattering, or smooth gradients, flat washes, or blurred out washes of any kind, that's going to be super difficult using watercolor pencils alone. And in my watercolor pencil 101 guide, I do show you a technique where you're able to use a scrap piece of watercolor paper as a type of mixing palette, if you will. And essentially what you do is you get that pigment from your watercolor pencils on that scrap piece of watercolor paper. Then using a paintbrush and water, you activate that color on your paper palette, and then you apply it on your actual painting using a paintbrush. And that certainly allows for more painterly effects. However, even when using that method, it's going to be very difficult to fill in a large area. So through knowing the strengths and the limitations of these mediums, you're able to create a strategy for yourself that is going to help you arrive at much better results. 
At this point, I just love combining the looseness, the soft textures and effects that regular traditional watercolor paint so easily allows with more precise, detailed mark making that I can do so easily with watercolor pencil. And I do activate the pigment that I have placed with watercolor pencil one or two times throughout the process, depending on what it is that I am painting. But I embrace the texture, the lines, the marks, and the sketchy look that watercolor pencils leave behind. I love the depth that this combination of effects brings because things that are sharper and more detailed are gonna pop out more to the viewer and look like they are closer, while things that are blurred out and less defined are gonna look like they are farther away. So here's what I like doing when I am going to be working on a primarily watercolor pencil piece. So it's more of a full composition, a full piece because I also create other watercolor pencil pieces where I don't have any background and there's no need to bring in traditional watercolor paint in those cases, which I have tutorials where I do this, where I leave the background completely white that I have shared before. But when it's more of a full composition with a background, I always bring in traditional watercolor paint and I usually paint it before getting started with the actual subject the way I did with this piece, you saw in the beginning how I painted my green background and I am now working on the actual bird, the focal point. Through bringing in traditional watercolor paint to paint in that background, I'm able to use way more water to create those effects. What I did was I pre-wetted my entire background with clean water and I then started dropping in my green color. This helped me create organic, soft, wet on wet effects. And once I developed my variety of greens throughout my background and while everything was still wet, I even did some splattering with water to develop a little bit more texture. And at the end of this painting process, I'm going to be bringing out my watercolor paint once again to add even more splattering, but now with green paint. At the end of this video, you're going to see what I do to keep the bird and the branch protected while I do that final splattering so that I don't get any little specks of paint on my subject. These two mediums really complement each other beautifully, and you can combine them in all sorts of ways to create amazing effects. In the past, I've talked about the importance of going in with a strategy, especially when you're using these kinds of mediums that have a translucent quality to them, because we're not really able to go in and cover up our mistakes with a thick layer of paint like we could when we are painting with opaque painting mediums such as acrylics or oils. Also, once some amount of pigment has been placed on the paper, it's going to be very hard, near impossible to go back to the whiteness that the paper once had. So we can't easily erase mistakes. We can certainly make them less noticeable, but it's gonna be hard to go back to the whiteness and the brightness the paper once had. So in order to have a smoother painting process, in order to avoid unnecessary frustration, and in order to be able to produce the amazing artwork that I know that you have it in you to create, I would highly recommend thinking of the specific effects that you're looking for in the different areas of your piece, thinking of the specific yes mediums and the techniques that are going to help you create those effects and set yourself up for success with at least a very basic and simple plan. It doesn't have to be a very specific plan with a gazillion steps. You do have to be somewhat flexible because as we all know, things happen throughout the art making process that we weren't anticipating and that's a beautiful thing. But I do want to encourage you to create a simple plan for yourself and to give thought to the effects, the specific supplies, and the techniques that you're going to need to create that beautiful piece that you're visualizing. Taking even five to 10 minutes to plan or prepare before getting started with the final piece can make all the difference in the world. For me, it's been essential to explore and increase my skills with both mediums individually so that I can understand them better and expand my horizons in terms of what I can do with each. And it's through developing that skill and that knowledge that I've been able to come up with this process that now incorporates them both. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, 
pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.